Oh. Welcome so. back, ladies and gentlemen, to the top of the third inning. Uh, <laughs> it looks like... Oh, one moment. Now batting is number 32, Ryan Pita. It seems I was mistaken as to who the batter was. I didn't have the proper tick marks counted out on my roster, but the pitcher, Ryan Pita, Hits a big foul ball back behind the stands and towards Lions Road. And when you hit it right back uh, like that, that means that you're right on it. So Kennard has to be careful here. Are we next to Pruch is Gita? Well, I do have an interesting question after this pitch, which Gita hits to right center, but he makes the catch. And now Diego Mendoza is going to come up, which I will say right now. Stepping up to bat, number four, Diego Mendoza. If you're a pitcher, obviously you want the phenomenal run support that North Broward has provided so far. So as but a pitcher, does... I'd also be about five inches taller. That's true. But at the same time, wouldn't the length of an inning like that mess up your rhythm? Oh, absolutely. And that's something that you see uh, in professional baseball as well, is oftentimes pitchers will duck back uh, into the clubhouse to see if they can get uh, some bullpen session in uh, in between uh, innings, especially in the American League when the pitcher has no uh, hitting duty. So, so that's certainly something uh, that we'll have to see how Kennard responds to, but it looks like he's done fairly well thus far. Wouldn't it be great if we had a radar gun? <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. Big hack comes up with nothing, though. It's one and two. We don't have any statistics on Kennard, as this is the first game of the season. In the heart of the order, though, for the Crusaders. Hi, two and two now. All statistics will be made throughout this game. Certainly good ones for North Broward Prep, at least Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. North Broward has a, I'm bad at math, is that a six-run lead? Eight. Eight run. I just mentioned I'm bad at math. We can tell... Yes, I've just shown that to the world, or the however in many fact, people are watching in fact, us. The scoreboard uh, cannot support the ten-run uh, spot that North Broward put on. It appears as zero. Uh, it, it, flink, it links back between one and zero uh, to demonstrate the ten, and it says twelve uh, on the official total run score. Now betting number six, Mark Robbins. That's going to bring up the next batter. As Mendoza walked, Robbins having a small chat with the third base coach, his manager. Not quite sure what this is about. Could be going over signs. Uh, could be trying uh, to get a play going, uh, perhaps a hit and run here. I'll have to see what Robbins does. It is very early in the season. You have to imagine that not everyone has memorized the signs quite yet. Pull out all the stops, though, uh, if you're the manager of Coral Springs Christian Steve Carp. You're down here early in the game, early in the season. Uh, try to make things happen. See how your ball club responds. Kennard looks at the runner that doesn't exist. Here's a pitch. Tops it up. It's going to go foul. That's out of play. Out of play. Once again, someone from JV to go get it. Remember when you were on JV and I was on JV and we weren't on the same JV, but we were always sent to get foul balls? Oh, that was fun. It was fun. That was a good time. It's a good time. My year on JV, I basically turned into the team's unofficial bat boy. <laughs> As bench warmer isn't a position that you can put on a roster. Here's a pitch. Oh, boy. Strike. Oh, and two now. should mention as well, uh, in addition to the 10-run rule, uh, mercy rule, there's a 15-run mercy rule that is 15 after 4. North Broward's still a ways away from that. True, but if they keep up this pace, then you never know. This is true. At this pace, the exponential growth from 2 to 10... Well, I'm not good at math, but that would mean we would hit the mercy rule after the third inning, I believe. Well, we, would, we have to play minimum of three and a half since it is North Broward. Uh, the home team who has the advantages. That ball looks like it may have caught Clyde in a funky 
part of his body where there was no padding. He appears to be okay, uh, but that's certainly not something you want to see when your team has the lead. Catchers have made it tough stuff, and their protective gear is made of even tougher stuff. Here's the pitch. He's going to ground that right to the shortstop, slips it for one, and picks oh, it up for two. Nice scoop there from the first baseman. That's Dylan Ogozali who made the nice play, the senior coming up big, and that is how the top of the third will end. Oh, that is the top of the third. I didn't notice. Well, that is the top of the third. We'll be right back with the bottom right after this. Don't go anywhere. Three, Ty, Marsh! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the bottom of the third inning. Ty Marsh is going to lead us off for North Broward, the center fielder number three. We have a new pitcher on the mound. Brandon Diaz, number 16 of Coral Springs Christian, has taken to towing the rubber. Well, that answers the question of uh, how Steve Carp manages G uh, Gita and how much he's able to pitch and where he goes afterwards. It does appear as though he's playing third base. Let's see if the crowd responds to this. Hey, there's a few. Okay. There's a few. That's a better track record than usually for you. Than usual. Let me just clarify that it is the greatest feeling on the face of the earth when you can actually get people to participate in that. Because he usually can't. It appears as though Gita's actually playing first base. And it seems that Diaz is taking a lot more uh, warm-up pitches okay, so than Okay, so Gita and Diaz, if you're scoring at home, uh, just switched spots. Uh, Gita's now playing first. Diaz, who's previously playing first, is now pitching. Remember, Diaz had that string of a couple errors uh, back in the second inning. Who's keeping score at home, let's be honest? I'm not even keeping score uh, on the broadcast. Uh, so never mind. It's an expression, Sam. Harkens back to uh, watching old videos of Dan Patrick on uh, Sports Center, the old 90s Sports Center. Oh, yes. with Keith, Ober Keith Oberman. I obviously. Keith uh, Oberman, great. I was not uh, there, but I've watched old videos and he used to say uh, if you're scoring at home or even if you're just by yourself. So. Well, Marsh is going to step into the batter's box. <coughs> yeah, Marsh, to wonder. Marsh, sorry, Sam. Marsh, another one of those versatile guys. He's currently playing center field, but also. Speaking of versatile, that is launched to right field. It's going to drop, and Marsh is going to have extras. He's going to pull up for two. And with Marsh's speed, he probably uh, could have had an opportunity to go for three there. Decides to be conservative, though, with the eight run lead and stop at two. No penny. Number 31, Logan Clyde. Now the question I was going to ask. We had already discussed whether or not Clyde is a fan of Mike Piazza, but looking at the center field wall, you have to wonder, is Mike Ostrowski, our athletic director, a fan of the Boston Red Sox? 
So that triangle that we mentioned out, that's uh, where both of the inside of the park home runs went to begin. That triangle has become a fad in ballparks recently. Marlins Park has it, the Trop has it, uh, out of Tampa Bay. Uh, so it's certainly something that you see begin to prop up more and more at these ballparks. Why is this a strike? Oh, and soon now. Do you approve of the trend? I do. I think it's a good idea. It adds uh, some danger, not danger in terms of physical violence, uh, but in terms of how you play the ball, as that one's just foul. Uh, for center fielders, uh, and that it also gives you an opportunity to make the ballpark a little bit deeper and play just a little bit bigger. That has some golf style slice on it. If it wasn't, could, could you chalk that up to the, the wind, wind, or would you say that that's just a no, matter that's of the, physics? That's the spin of the ball combining with the fact that he's a little bit late on it, makes the ball tail away to right handed hitters. It was pretty though. Looks like my golf swing. Oh, that's, that's Your driver? driver? You know what? Nobody. Uh, there is a professional golfer named Ben Curtis. I am not him. Speaking of golf swings, that was one, and it plunks into center field. Runners at the corners now. That'll get it done. Those shades of Vladimir Guerrero there, digging the ball out of the dirt for a base hit. Stepping up to bat, number 24, Zach Coverville. Did you know that Yogi Berra's first ever professional hit was... A single, single off a ball that bounced in the dirt? I did not know that, as a matter of fact. So, so if you're younger, younger Vladimir Guerrero, if you're an older viewer, Yogi Berra. Just by the catcher! Yogi Berra wouldn't have let that one go. I uh, know that one uh, was quite erratic, but interesting to see that cement uh, backstop. Number 25 is a pinch running for Clyde. Uh, sorry, 25, I was about to say, Jacob Gordon, he was the pinch runner from earlier. I was about to say that that cement backstop plays really fast, so runners at third base are going to have to be very wary because that ball can come back to the catcher in a hurry, and it's what got Hellman in trouble. Find a strike low in the zone, right at the knees. There's not much you can do if you're a hitter there. No, that was a pitcher's pitch low and inside. And it really got Goberville in a tough situation. Still looking for his uh, first actual at-bat. You can call that an at-bat. That is whipped to right center. Get past the center fielder. One run comes in. Another will. Going for three. And he's going to get it. A two RBI triple. Well, Goberville got hit. Uh, with his first two at-bats, it looked like he was going for a little revenge on the baseball there. He got all of that one deep into the gap in right center. Strapping up to bat, number 11, Dylan Okosili. Revenge is probably the right word for that. That was tattooed. Well, it takes the ball. There was a scary moment in the top of the second inning uh, when Coral Springs Christian took a 4-2 to two lead, and it looked like Raul Kennard was reeling. But North Broward really has picked it up on the offensive side, and Kennard has held his ground as well. He had, didn't give up a run in that relatively quiet third inning. Uh, but North Broward's absolutely exploded offensively here tonight in front of the sellout crowd in the opening of the new facility. Uh, pretty much a perfect start to the season and to this new uh, – Baseball stadium for the Eagles. We sell, sell our crowd if we sold tickets. It's a, Great admission. It's, it's an expression. It, it is, is an expression. expression. So is uh, scoring at home. Music. Yeah, it's, 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 it's becoming a trend. Now Diaz looks for a sign he likes. Finally finds one. What is it? It's an off-speed pitch that fools him. Two and two now. Ogazelli was certainly not looking for off speed there. You can see he was timing up for the fastball, and he knew that he wasn't going to have a chance at that off speed, so he lets it go. Counts even up now at 2 2. Ogazelli back in the box. Low. That's going to be too low. Ball full count. Don't forget, there is a runner on third right now. And it's Goberville. Thank you. And now full count for Ogozelli. And he's going to 